Good morning, mathematicians. This is Miss Lehman. Today we're going to talk about how we can add zeros to the dividend in order to re make remainders actually part of your quotient. When we talked about dividing whole numbers, one of our uh, remainder interpretation types was to share the remainder. And this is one way that we can do that, to share the remainder um, when we actually can add zeros to the dividend, okay? The first thing that I need to point out to you in order to make sense of this strategy is that we all know that 26 as a whole number is the same as this, okay? We might be able to relate to this with money. If I had $26, that would be the same thing as if I had $26 and no cents, right? So the first thing that you need to remind yourself of is that if you have zeros following a decimal point, they actually don't add any value. They just serve as placeholders, okay? So that's the first thing that we need to look at in order to make sense of this strategy. Okay, well, let's try out an example so that you can see what I am talking about when I talk about adding these zeros, okay? Let's start off with this because this is a good example of a dividing decimals type question. The first thing that we must do when we divide a decimal is to take care of the decimal point before I ever divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. I zero in on the divisor because I want to make this divisor a whole number before I start that process. If I multiply it by 10, that moves the decimal point to the right one time and that makes it 95. But whatever I do to the divisor, I must also do to the dividend, right? So I'm going to multiply this by 10 as well and move that decimal point one time to the right. Now, wherever, whenever I know where that decimal is going to land in my dividend, I let it rock it up and go into my quotient. That's where it's gonna sit in my quotient. Now, here's the thing. I don't even know what digit will be here or here or here or here, but I know that the decimal point is going to sit at this location, right? So now let's actually try to figure out what digits we are going to have in this number, and let's go through that process of divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Remember, guys, very important to record zeros on the top um, so that you do have digits above every number that is in your dividend, this is gonna help save you from some common misconceptions and common errors that kids make when they do these problems. 95 can't go into two. 95 can't go into 26. So what I mean is I can't get groups of 95 from 26, right? But 95 can go into 267, okay? Not exactly sure how many times I didn't memorize my 95 times tables, but I'm thinking two sounds like a reasonable number. Now I'm going to come to the side and I'm going to find out if that divide was a good thought, right? So we're going to do some check here. When I double 95, I have five times two gives me 10. Nine times two gives me 18 plus one gives me 19. I have 190. Okay, I see that that was a good choice because I can't get any closer to this without going over it. Okay, I'm going to prove that right here by subtracting and then I'll do that secret compare step to make sure that that was a good choice. Okay, seven minus zero is seven. Six minus nine can't do that and have anything positive. So I've got to borrow and regroup. 16 minus 9, that works, and I get 7. 1 minus 1 is 0. Again, when I compare, is 77 less than 95? Yes, it is. So that was a good choice, okay? I know that my multiplication to get 190, I've done that. I then subtracted. I did that secret compare step to make sure that that was a good choice, and now I'm going to bring down this 9. All right, I have 779. I'm asking myself, what's a reasonable number of times or of, of groups of 95 that I could get from this? Hmm, not sure, but I'm thinking 8. I'm going to write 8 here. That's my divide step. Then I'm going to come and do just a little scrap work 
to see if that answer was reasonable, if that worked out, okay? 8 times 5 gives me 40. 8 times 9 gives me 72, plus 4 gives me 76. All right, let's come over here and we see, oh, that was a good choice because that's very close to this number without going over. Certainly, I can't get another group of 95 from that. So that's my multiply, okay? Then I'm going to subtract. When I subtract, I see that I have 19 left. Okay, 19 is my remainder at this point. So I subtracted. When I compare, that works out. 19 is less than 95. So that was a good choice. Now there's nothing to bring down. So sometimes, and especially if this were just a problem that you were given like this, you might report it as 28 remainder 19. But the problem with 28 remainder 19 is that really that remainder 19 without context doesn't mean very much to us right? So instead, when I look at this 19, I'm noticing it's pretty similar to what I'm seeing over here, all right? What I want you to remember is that if I add a zero to a number following a decimal point, I don't change the value of it, right? Here I'm looking at 2,679, and when I add a zero to the end of it following the decimal, I'm still looking at 2,679. I haven't changed the value. What I have done is given myself an additional bring down, okay? Because when I bring down this zero, look how perfectly this is gonna work out, okay? My, uh, my next divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, of course, it's gonna follow the decimal point and it has to for this strategy to work. But again, it's not changing the value of my dividend. We've just added a zero. We've given ourselves a bring down zero. And now we get to do divide, multiply, subtract, bring down one more time because we added more zeros, okay? Now, if you do this, uh, sometimes kids love this strategy and they wanna just keep going to make to see if they can make it work out perfectly. I would never add more than three zeros because if it doesn't work out after three zeros, it's probably not going to. Uh, so certainly, even if you like this this and, and want to do this and practice this, I would never never bring down more than, than three zeros, guys, okay? Because that problem just becomes so long um, and certainly I don't think it'll work out perfectly then, all right? So let's take a look here. How many groups of 95 can we get from 190? Well, we've already seen that two groups of 95 gives us exactly 190. Now, when I subtract, look, I have a remainder of zero. There's no bring down, again, so our problem stops. But look how by adding that one extra zero, what we have done is achieved this. We have actually made what would have just been remainder 19. We've actually been able to make it part of the quotient and express it again with this two tenths. So now our problem really has no remainder. We just have the answer of 28 and 2 tenths.